Good morning, everyone. Uh, let us start with uh, digitalized switching system. So let us continue with the things. So today in this session, let us uh, have a discussion and uh, brush up of the module number two, that is part two. In module number two, we have again two parts. One is evolution of switching system, another one is digitalized switching systems. So in this in today's class, so let us discuss about uh, digital switching systems. Okay. So actually, in this particular topic, uh, in today's session, we will discuss about uh, the basics of digital switching system, how the hierarchies of switching system happens, how the evolutions has been done in a digital switching system, how it is going to work, and what are the blocks involved in this. So we will try to cover these many portions today, that is this part. So let us go to the actual things. So as I told in this session, today I will discuss about uh, digital switching system. So under that, let us discuss about uh, the purpose of analysis. That is, uh, what is the purpose of analyzing digital switching system? So it is reliability of digital switching system needs to become increasingly important for users of telephone services. It is very important to know that it is very reliable and most of internet access takes place through digital switching system that means may, you know that in uh, olden days if you take a physical connection internet to your home that used to happen through telephones that is uh, for example dial up connections if you remember so nowadays it is uh, happening uh, by using of uh, haptical fibers but in uh, olden days it used to happen using uh, telephones only by using digital switching system so like dial up calls right uh, we uh, for every time if you want to make uh, the internet connection access you have to dial up the connection you have to establish the connection physically by using a software in your pc or laptop then you have to establish the connection or soon after the finishing your work in the internet you have to disconnect or uh, you have to close the connection or terminate the connection so it has set of procedures so that was uh, very long back what we used to do but nowadays it will happen uh, within fraction of seconds and uh, it will be you, you cannot able to notice only right so it will not be done using the dial up but still many of the services like bsnl is using the same uh, kind of procedure or the things but uh, all of the other private companies have been modified and they have shifted for new things so almost all uh, uh, money transfers that is electronically depends on digital switching system and federal government requires that all network outage exceeds 30 minutes be reported to federal communications so commission they call it as FCC so the reliability of digital switching system is very important issue okay so we cannot ignore it it's very important and digital switching system represents very complex system it's going to represent a very complex system and in the next part we are going to discuss about the basics central office linkages of digital switching system how the central office is going to construct central office means we know that uh, i have told many a times in this particular subject that uh, in with respect to india we call uh, central office as telephone exchange but with respect to north america so they call it as a central office that means the terminologies will be different in each countries so we call in India as a telephone exchange, but in North America they call it as a central office. So that means I, that means to say the author in the textbook he is telling the basic linkages involved in telephone exchange that we are going to discuss in the next topic. So that is basic central office linkages. During the analysis of digital switching system, it will helps to define the extent of central office. So it is going to helps to define the extent that means the extension of central office in the short form we call it as co and its linkages to other facilities that means how it is going to link to the other facilities that we are going to show and the basic linkages of typical central office is as shown in the diagram below so in the block diagram we are going to show how the central office is interconnected to other linkages to perform its task so we have main distribution frame so we have many other uh, parts so this is a block diagram so you can see or notice the central office we call it as a co 
so it is interconnected to six blocks like this so all are bi-directional you can see the direction of the both the sides so one block is called as main distribution frame this block is called trunk distribution frame this is called power plant this is called carrier facilities this is called digital cross connect this is called special services so each block is having its own special functions to perform a task okay so main distribution frame trunk distribution frame carrier facility all will be having some different different specific functions or uh, a facility to perform like power plant means you can by the name itself you can say that it is dealing with the power facilities or supervision of power related functions so special services means some special kind of things like uh, to give the caller ids or internet facilities or to record the things like that okay so digital cross connect like that every block is having its own specific functions okay so now let us discuss each block how it's going to operate so let us dis discuss with the first block that is main distribution frame it is abbreviated as mdf okay the location where all the lines and all other related links are cross connected this main distribution frame is nothing but it is a location that is place where all the lines and other related links are cross connected to the central office switch so from the basic of digital switching system we know that what is a switch if you want to make a connection from transmitter to receiver we need to use a switch okay then only we can able to connect the call from transmitter to receiver or from person a to person b okay so the main distribution frame means can you remember it is a place or a location where all the lines and other related links are cross connected to the central office and also refer to the line side of the switch and the main distribution frame is probably the most labor extensive part of central office and all the lines from the subscriber terminate in the main distribution frame so all the lines of the subscriber is going to terminate in the main distribution frame and the main distribution frame has got two sides one is vertical side another one is horizontal side the main distribution frame is having two sides one is vertical side another one is horizontal side another important point is all the subscriber lines always remember that subscriber line means it's a end user line okay so end point so that is going to terminate in main distribution frame the subscriber cables terminating on vertical side the subscriber cable terminating on vertical side the wiring from the digital switching system refer to the line equipment terminate on the horizontal sides the wiring from the digital switching system refer to the line equipment is going to terminate at the horizontal side at the vertical side it's going to terminate the customer cable terminates okay based on the assignment of the subscriber to the line equipment wires are connected between the vertical that is cable pair and horizontal that is line equipment pair the assignment process for sub subscribers to line equipment is usually automated the assignment process for sub subscribers to line equipment is usually automated fine so next trunk distribution frame the location again it is a place where all the trunks and other related links are cross connected to the central office switch in main distribution frame only the changes it is also a location where all the lines and links are cross connected but here all the trunks it's very easy to remember for trunk distribution frame we just need to replace the line with trunk for main distribution frame you have to replace it by lines okay that is also referred to as trunk side of a switch there it is line side of a switch or link side of a switch and the trunk distribution frame is usually smaller than main distribution frame and all the trunks cabling from different location terminates in trunk distribution frame okay but there in main distribution frame the subscriber links are going to terminate in main distribution frame but in trunk distribution frame here all the trunks cabling from different locations are going to terminate here okay and here how we have in main distribution frame the vertical side and horizontal side this is also having 
the vertical side and horizontal side in TDF that is the trunk distribution frame. The trunk cables terminate at vertical cables. The trunk cables is going to terminate the vertical cables. The wiring from the digital switching system refer to the trunk equipment. There it is link or line equipment terminates on the horizontal side. So if you remember one thing and if you remember the differences between both, you can make a sentence. It is easy to remember. Based on the assignment of the cable to the trunk equipment, the vertical cable pair are connected to horizontal trunk equipment pair. The assignment process for trunk to trunk equipment is usually automated. The assignment process for trunk to trunk equipment is usually automated. That means it is not manual, it is done automatically. Next, another block, power plant. As I already told, it's nothing but deals with the power. So it's a combination of power converters, battery systems and emerging power sources which supply basically minus 48 and 24 volts DC power and protected AC power to central office switch. Okay, so that is about power plant and carrier facilities. So the facilities which provide carrier and multiplex transmission mode between central office with other parts of telephone network. That is nothing but carrier facility and these facilities typically employ the coaxial cables that is land or underseas. So it can be a land cables or undersea cables. We can also call it as uh, like marine cables. So under the cables I already told in the module number one that means if you want to establish a connection between one country to another country many a times they lay a cable under the seas so we call it as under the or main cables they will call that one okay so radio and satellite system the carrier facilities usually terminates on trunk distribution frame for cross connection to digital switching system so digital cross connect or we call it as digital x connect it provides automatic assignment and cross connection of trunks to digital switching systems. It provides automatic assignment and cross connection of the trunk to digital switching system. It can be considered as small switching system for trunks. It is also considered as small switching system for the trunks and special services. So these services are those services which requires special interface or the procedures to connect the central office facility to the customer. For example, data service, I told, that is internet service or wireless service, that means Wi-Fi modem, okay, like that. These are categorized as special services. This is about the block diagram of basic central office linkage of digital switching system it is very important topic definitely they may ask it for seven to eight marks kindly practice the diagram and remember it is very easy and it is important for exam point of view you can refer the previous year question paper it is frequently asked question and it is very important okay and next topic is outside plant versus inside plant so the word may look odd but uh, the thing is very easy to remember this one see here outside means uh, here outside plant uh, with respect to industries if you tell plant means like uh, it's not like uh, it's a set of equipments so here if they establish any of the things some industries with with respect to some setup there some plant like it may be electrical plant or mechanical plant or something thermal plant or something so outside plant or for, for the best example I will take so outside equipment inside equipment for example you take DTH service so there if I tell outside equipment means you can take it as parabolic antenna and that uh, optical wires right and low noise amplifiers which you connect in uh, parabolic antenna those are called as outside equipments okay that means the equipments which are outside residing outside okay then which are the inside equipments inside equipments are nothing but your setup box which you are going to place or which you are going to connect through either vga cable or hdmi cable to your uh, tv okay to establish a connection through dth right so this is the best example you take so again i'll repeat 
so outside plant and inside plant means the best example is DTH okay I told the example and it is very easy to understand in a similar manner in digital switching system we have outside plant and uh, inside plant so it is a very important topic they may ask it for two three marks but uh, it is quite important many a times they ask it so most of the telephone companies classify the telephone equipment as outside plant and inside plant so that means most of the telephone companies they classify certain equipment as, as a category of outside plant and some of them as a category of inside plant and these classification is very important for analysis of switching system because in order to analyze whether those equipments will fall under outside plant or inside plant okay so they are having different strategies for each okay so that is the reason they made like that so main distribution carries a system that is main distribution frame carries a system so usually uh, referred to as outside plant that is MDF which carries and usually which is referred to as outside plant as I already told and I give an example of video service and this includes underground cables open wire subscriber equipment so do you agree with this these all comes under outside plant so which are inside plant the central office equipment such as central processor switching fabric ton generators are considered as inside plant that means the equipment which are uh, installed inside the exchange those are called as inside plant the equipments or the uh, things which are installed or used outside the plant is called as outside plants so this is about outside and inside plants of digital switching system so next topic is switching system hierarchy so it is very important topic it is having a diagram you need to practice and here we are having some five classes so class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 and class 5 so here the classes we need to discuss and we need to remember and each classes will be having certain points to be remembered so this switching system hierarchy also uh, the authors is taking with the uh, things or contents of North America so he calls through the North America network and follows the hierarchical path it may be for India it may be different for the countries it may be different for North America this diagram is written the search for the path through the network for a long distance call follows the hierarchical similarity to the following diagram so here we have class number one so class 2 is in this diagram and each class is having certain shapes so the things which I give it here so class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4 and class 5 so this shape is indicating international gateway exchange for making international call from one country to another country class 1 they call it as region tool center class 2 they call it as sectional tool center class 3 they call it as primary tool center and class 4 they call it as tool or tandem office and class 5 like a big dot that is end office or local exchange we will call that means usually the subscriber that is we we have a connection from local exchange okay that we call it as end office also by another name so this is a diagram of the switching system hierarchy so we have class 1 class 1 class 2 class 3 and international gateway and class 4 from class 4 we have class 5 which is the local exchange which is connected to subscribers so this is another type of way so now practice this diagram it's very important it is easy also after a call leaves a class 5 switch a path is hunted hunted in a sense to be fine through a class 4 office followed by class 3 then class 2 and then it reaches class 1 okay that how it actually works in addition these are international gateways that is there are international gateways office which are sent connected to central office to call to complete the international call destination through the cables or it may be through satellites or through using microwave signals okay so local exchange as we know it is indicated as class 5 it is also referred to as end office that is EO it refer interference with subscriber directly and connects to tool center via trucks it records subscriber billing information so kindly remember the points of each block it also referred to as an end office that is it is end office it interfaces within the subscriber directly and interconnects with the tool center and with the uh, via trunks 
okay it also collects the billing information of the subscriber that is customer tandem and tool office that is class number four so most of the class number five of the central office interface with the tandem office the tandem office primarily switch the try the trunk traffic between the class 5 office they also interface with higher level of tools office so next primary tool center it is indicated as class 3 it is directly serviced by class number 4 or class 5 it is directly serviced by class number 4 or class 5 and depends upon trunk deployment in other words it is nominal number of trunks in this office are exhausted then the traffic from lower hierarchy office can home into the class 3 office it has the capability of storing modifying prefixing translating and code converting the received digits so again going to the class number 2 kindly remember the points in class 3 it is very important so class 2 sectional tool center so it functions as a tool center and can home into the class 1 office regional tool center that is class 1 it functions as a tool center and can home into the international gateway so now international gateway this office has a direct access to international gate office in other countries it will also provides international operator assistance the advantages of digital switching system hierarchy that is it provides an efficient way of searching for a path through the network this is an important topic that is it is having an advantage that it provides an efficient way of searching and path through the network and what is the disadvantage of switching system hierarchy it is a primary sectional and regional tool center goes down then large area of north america become inaccessible that means it depends on the uh, classes that is if the primary sectional and regional tool center will not work properly if that do goes down due to any of the problem so the whole system like will be in problem that is inaccessible that means we cannot able to establish a connection so in the following table which shows the approximate number of end offices and tool centers of north america so as i told already in the textbook the author already specifies everything it have knowledge everything with respect to north america so regional tool center we having in num in 1977 12 but in 1982 it is having 10 the sectional tool center it was 67 it is 52 primary tool center it is 230 it is 168 tool and tandem office it is 1300 and then 925 end office is 19000 now it is in 1982 it is 19,000 plus it may be more also now fine so next topic is evolution of digital switching systems so let me stop at this point we'll continue in the next class so evolution of digital switching systems so we are done with this many topics today so the evolution of digital switching system we'll continue with this from the next class okay